What is up, orange men and women? This is another episode of Ty Thoughts. You might be wondering, where the hell has Tyler been? Well, he's still around. He's been a little bit busy. If you listen to the Q's Militia, you might have heard why he's been busy. He'll tell you. I'll let him tell you himself. So, uh, before we get started, I have first got to mention the title sponsor for Tide Thoughts, Q's Militia, and Armchair Media, and that is betonline.ag. Look, go there, betonline.ag. You can go there, you can look at all of the virtual stuff that they've got going on, but as well as, obviously, all of the live game action that you can imagine is over at betonline.ag. Um, the, the, the thing about betonline.ag that I like that I first noticed when I went there was that how easy the, the site is to use on your phone. Okay, extremely easy to use. Um, as we well know, maybe there's a chance you can't get to a game this year, depending on where you are in the country, but you can get in on all of the action at betonline.ag. They're going the extra mile to make sure you can get involved in everything imaginable. This season, from game spread totals to team player and coaching props, BetOnline gives you more options to wager than any other place online. You can get in on their season opening bonuses today and start off wagering on win division championship futures now uh, head over to betonline.ag today and take advantage of all of the great sign up bonuses bet online your online sports book experts thank you betonline.ag all right look one more thing real quick now if if you haven't gotten tyler a wedding gift let's just say He's deserving of a wedding gift. Let's just say that, okay? If you have not gotten him one, may I suggest someone get this man the Lawnmower 3.0. It's a premium electric trimmer that's designed to give you a confidence boost through body image. Look, it is also waterproof. It has an LED light, so you can manscape outside in the rain, which is outside is where rain usually happens. So out there in the rain, out there in the rain in the dark, however you want to do it. I don't recommend underwater. I have not tried that. I have not, but um, the perfect pair also with the lawnmower 3.0 uh, trimmers is the Shears 2.0 nail kit. These things keep evolving as 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 per the numbers that keep getting larger. Okay, so look for maybe next year or soon the Shears 3.0. Well, who knows what that'll come with? Because this one is great. Comes with stainless steel tools, four of them. Tip tweezers, round point scissors, fingernail clippers, and a medium grit nail file. Look, go to the website, check them out, check out all the products. The crop preserver, anti chafing, let's just say anti chafing, just just say anti chafing, okay? And you can go there, check it all out. Check out the cologne, which is one of my favorites. I love that stuff, it smells great. Um, right now, our listeners, if you go to manscaped.com, you get 20% off and free shipping. If you use the promo code armchair, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Just use the promo code armchair. Thank you, manscaped.com. Now, here's Tyler and his thoughts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Syracuse fans, Tyler Marona fans, whoever you are and wherever you may be this evening while I'm recording, it is October 7th, Wednesday, and I'm back in the saddle as a married man. You might have been thinking, where were you, Tyler? We need some thoughts. We need some education. We want to hear your take on Syracuse football. And today, I don't have to start off the show by saying we have to entertain the triple option anymore, which is a good thing because I think how we've gone the triple option way, I think that we would have discovered Sean Tucker earlier, but here we are. We're now discovering him from the spread. So um, I'm not even sure if uh, Sean and Joe ran that teaser that I put out there um, with my groomsman and I um, talking about on, on the air, but maybe I'll throw it in at the end of this episode anyway, just to give you guys a little recap on what happened. So, um, I, I'm married. Um, and it's, it's even kind of weird. I'm, I am so tired. I think for any of you guys that are married, not to be like, you know, an exclusive guy where it's like, okay, it's either you're in the club or you're not. I don't think that's super fair to anybody that's ever had, you know, like a big responsibility before, Um, that's not currently married and uh, wants to relate their life circumstances to mine. But 
you know, I am just, I think you can probably even hear it in my voice. I am wiped, but I needed to give the fans something. I need to give you guys something. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm back. I'm doing it. I put my nose to the grindstone. That's just what I do. You say you get married on Saturday. I'm podcasting on Saturday. I did a teaser episode and then now I'm back in the saddle. That's what we do. Um, and I had to get something out there because the Syracuse Orange are not going defeated this year. I think it's kind of interesting, too, because if you think about it, Georgia Tech beat Florida State. Florida State went almost wire to wire with a 1AA team or an FCS team, and then we beat Georgia Tech. So, of course, by the you know transitive property saying, well, if Georgia Tech beats Florida State, we beat Georgia Tech, therefore we're going to beat Florida State. I wouldn't go that far because you, you, you never know what's going to happen. You know this freaking COVID-ridden season is going to bring some sort of complication and you know maybe florida state's coach will come back one of these days and he won't you know be in quarantine so i'm not going to go that far yet but we have a win today in our pockets and it felt amazing to go out there and and really you might say that the georgia tech game was a good win with the score but i still look at the defense and i see this was a great win I think that um, Georgia Tech was helped out a little bit with those scores um, towards the third quarter when you saw that last touchdown. That running back is for real. And I do think that Georgia Tech is around the corner from being a really good team. They're in a great market in Atlanta. They've got a great campus. They play in a great conference. They're in a high school, talent-rich state. I do see them turning the corner eventually. They have to get rid of that triple option uh not even disguise or moniker or anything, but they just have the vibe. You know, when you meet somebody and you just know right away that that person's like homeless or they, you know, they're, they're just like a zero person. That is what Georgia Tech is right now with the triple option. Who's going to be the first guy to go there and really make that name? I don't, it's nobody on the roster yet, but they're doing a good job. And I think they're well coached ish. They just are so talent devoid on what they're trying to do. But somebody's got to take that plunge. It was kind of the same thing with the Dino, you know, situation where he comes in and then he's kind of polishing what was left over from the previous era. And when it's not his guys, um, you have to kind of make that, um, lemonade out of lemons. And I think that Georgia Tech is definitely getting like that. Um, my dad does this all the time, but he goes to like squeeze a lemon in his iced tea and he points it up in like my face and then squeezes it. And of course, like a, a shot of lemon juice goes straight in my eye and then I can't see for the next 10 minutes. And you're like, dad, what the hell was that? Like you missed your cut by a million feet. And he's like, Oh, I did. I'm sorry. So that's kind of what like the Georgia tech is getting right now. They're squeezing it, but there's like, they're not even squeezing in the glass yet. They're squeezing into somebody else's eye. And that's that's kind of where we're at. So I do think that Georgia Tech is around the corner, but they're not that formidable opponent yet. So this was a good win, actually a great win for Tony White and the defensive staff. If I'm Coach Babers this week, I don't even go to Coach White's office because I would just post like a placard on his uh, door saying four interceptions. I mean, that just goes without saying. You're doing that. I mean, you're 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 manhandling the team. So I think defensively, our secondary. Um, we just provide such a different look at all times and the possibilities are kind of like the triangle offense of basketball, which like if you break it down to the nitty gritty, there's so many different opportunities or there's so many combinations that could come from this set that it makes it hard to plan accordingly for all of them. It's almost like it's been described as facing an option team on offense, but you're getting it on defense because it's such a different look that it's hard to um, really kind of focus in on it at a week at the time, a week at a time. I'm sorry, but I was reading uh, Pete Thamel of Yahoo and he was doing a write up about the three, three, five, because enough teams are running it now to where he wanted to kind of get an inside look and Syracuse was mentioned in there and he was said, and it was, you know, noted that how many interceptions we have and all the takeaways and yada, yada, yada. And he said that we stifled good teams to lower amounts of points that have otherwise scored higher against other, you know, other teams. And really for the most part, like coach Babers mentioned in his post game presser against Georgia tech, if we remove a lot of like all the fourth quarters, we're actually probably playing top five defense in the country comparatively to who we're playing and what we're stacked up against. So don't let the points deceive you because we scored more, a lot more, not a lot more points, but we scored more points than they did. And I don't think once, the game was kind of going and you got a feel for it. I don't think anybody was like 
concerned we were going to lose that game. I, you know, you know, from the second that that thing was kicked off and you see that we're back in the dome and it looks great, by the way, as a former player, I think that the dome looks great. The like light show that they're doing now, turning off all the lights and doing the red lasers or whatever's going on in there. I think that's going to be electricity city. When you go in there and you see a touchdown happening and the laser show goes off, just sign a five-star recruit right then and there. Don't even let him leave. You just say, hey, the paper's here for you. You can do it. It's right here, right now. You get to be in here. Imagine yourself catching a ball and the laser show going off because of you. Fans go crazy. Look in the stands. You point out what girl you're going to get. I mean, if the laser show is about me, I'm not even thinking about the touchdown. I was like, I'm thinking about all the extracurricular that's coming with this. It's like, I'm going to have so much fun tonight. Nobody's going to know what to do with me. I mean, that's where my head goes, you know, or went back in the day. Obviously a married man now. Hear it? Hear it? That's a ring on my finger. No more messing around these days. You know, I got. I'm a wholesome guy now. I'm in the club. You know, and not to make this a club and non-club thing, but I'm a card carrying member. Hear this? That's a card. Card carrying member. Okay. So, I think that the team is moving the right direction. Um, so, if I'm Coach Babers this week, I skip. I, I have a placard installed outside of Coach White's office, and then I actually go to Coach Kavanaugh's office and I say, "Hey, look, you, the offensive line coach," and I'm saying, "Hey, you know what, Coach, you." have dealt with a lot and you are going through a lot personally, professionally, as well as you've been dealt probably the worst hand of offensive line depth in the country. And yet still you have a guy behind you and your and your guys running for over a hundred yards. And Sean Tucker is looking like the real deal. I remember watching Tucker's tape in high school and just going, you know, something's different about this guy. I'm not gonna say, you know, he's um, you know, Mark Ingram or Derrick Henry, but I'm, I am going to say that he's going to be a nice college running back. And if he can progress from here at like a decent rate, if he improves 10% every year, there'll be a problem by the time he's a senior. I mean, he's a big-bodied guy. He moves well. He sees the line of scrimmage, and then he knows, hey, you know what? He's, he has the Ezekiel Elliott kind of vision to him as well, where if he knows that if I try to do what the play designates, then this might get me one yard. But if I, you know, really kind of play this thing right and I overcome coaching or if I overcome the moment, then maybe I can turn this into three yards. And even those two extra yards, because, you know, if you get four yards of play, you never have a third down. I mean, never have a fourth down. I'm sorry. And if he's going, well, if I can get two four yarders and then now all of a sudden it's fourth or third and two versus third and eight, I mean, this just changes the whole outcome of what's going on. And then situational football takes over. That's all the New England Patriots do. It's getting to third and manageable. And they just go, hey, Tom, or hey, Cam, do what you do best on this play. Coaching is not that hard. People make it out to be that hard, but it's really not. It's like you, your, your money comes with how well you're able to execute on first down and third down. So if we're getting up to the line of scrimmage and all of a sudden it's second and six. Just think about that in your mind. You see Tommy DeVito walking to the line right now, and it's second and six. What if I told you it's second and ten? I'm I'm panicking because I'm thinking, well, Tommy missed his first pass. Now he's rattled. You know, he maybe he got hit. It was a drop. You know, it's no. Hand it to Sean Tucker. That's one less play that Tommy has to get hit. It's one less play he has to turn around and worry about what's going to happen on the other side of this snap. You know, you kind of catch my drift. I mean, it just makes so much of a of a difference and when you can get a coach that's bought in going through everything personally and is still turning in a decent effort from his guys i gotta say handshake goes to coach kavanaugh this week and then that running backs room hey if we turn in something you know another little something we could be having you know a handshake line going down so um hats off to you know and if i'm coach papers hats off to me i recruited sean tucker that was that was a great great signing as of right now he is he honestly the defense has put the offense in a great position to win that game, but had it not been for the Sean Tucker revelation that was and continues to be, I don't really see the the great feeling we have walking away from that game. I think we feel great about that game because we walk away thinking there's a roadmap or there's something that we can hold on to. It was kind of like in the Schaefer era, you know, when when I was there, it's going like, hey. I don't really know what's going to happen, but this Eric Dungy guy, he gives me hope for a better tomorrow. 
and that's what you can hold on to. And what what we were so upset about moving, you know, our you know, in the early on in the season was there's no hope. There's nothing we can rely on. And and that just you know factually wasn't true. There was just no way that that was true to begin with. So the fact that we have something to hang our hat on, and the fact that we're able to to move this thing along and get it into somewhere where we're like, hey, you know, I'm hanging on to this, or you know, maybe you know, we're not like over the moon about where our offensive line is right now. But if we have a couple guys that are going to be key contributors down the road, I know Service is leaving. I know Tisdale's a junior, and uh, Veterello and Bergeron are sophomores, and we're still, you know, playing Elmore in there at guard. But look, I mean, for how bad the situation is right now, uh, the transfers waiver getting denied, um, having all the injuries that stacked up, never having the ability to stack recruits on top of each other and build depth out of position room. That is the offensive line, which is more critical, I think, almost than any other position on the field. Wide receiver is really close to, but to be able to build a stable of guys and to have them be stable. I mean, if you're a head coach, you can go to sleep and wake up the next morning, and just not panic, you know, like, I think we've all been there where we're starting a new job and we think, you know, okay, we know we're starting it on Monday. We don't really know what it's going to be like. We don't know when the lights come on, what, you know, what's everybody going to act like? What's the manager actually like? Is he going to turn on me? And he was recruiting me in the interview. And then now is he going to be a dick? You know what I'm saying? Like we've all been there and we've all had those nights where we just kind of go to sleep anxious and then wake up in the, and we just sleep terribly. Like for me, it was always the first day going into winter workouts, knowing that, I had to go get my ass kicked at 6 a.m. the next day, and I had to sign up for that. You know, that <laughs> that's how a coach with no offensive line goes to bed and wakes up every morning, just crippling anxiety. And to be able to have that be the case with this staff in Syracuse, and they're still pulling off Ws, I tell you, man, a lot of handshakes to give out. So moving on, I know that that game is kind of old. It's a little stale. It's out of our minds, and we're looking forward to Duke. Um I don't have much on Duke. I don't watch that fraud team, that fraud university, that um, loser mentality school that tries to, you know, weasel wine and pick their way through and uh, have everybody feel bad about them. And then when they're winners, it's like, hey, everybody come, you know, nobody can join the bandwagon. It's like, I don't get what type of school that is. I don't get what type of, you know, athletes that they think that they're trying to produce or, you know, what type of mindset that they're even really trying to pull off here. I mean, there is zero sum school there, you know, and, and in fact, they're probably morally bankrupt because they pay their basketball players absurd amounts of money. They sign them to these contracts, essentially. I mean, they're, they're professional athletes at the college level. And for the sanctity of the game, we can't do that, right? You see, I mean, you know what I mean? We we can't have that be the case. So, you know, I don't know what, what kind of fast ones they're going to try to pull on Saturday. And frankly, I hope that we beat them by a 1,000, again, just to rub it in their face. So that, that's kind of all I have on the Syracuse Orange football. Sorry I'm a little late, um, but we'll we'll get more into the wedding right now. All right, so uh, basically, Ty thoughts for today are uh, getting married is super cool. Um, there's uh, not a whole lot else to say, but I was thinking about, um, you know, I it, it's been interesting, honestly, because um, this was one of the things that I knew for sure when I was really young that I wanted to do. I really wanted to get married, and I I searched for that. Um, pretty aggressively for a long time as far as like, okay, well, you know, I know I want to get married, but you know, what does that really mean? How do I go about that? Obviously you got to start with having a girlfriend and then a fiance, then a wife. Um, and you know, that idea of like, okay, well, there's a process to things and it doesn't come easily. And that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about this week for Thai thoughts was like, you know, what's really the appropriate way to you know, either number one, dream chase, which, you know, we'll talk about a lot on, on this podcast. And, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, dream chasers would be a great podcast that I would like to do one day with maybe me and somebody else that, um, you know, at the end of the day, 
uh, or maybe that's a radio show on Sirius XM. I don't know. Dream Chasers, you know, come listen to Dream Chasers Sunday at five. You know, you can do one of those, or uh, you know, Dream Chasers, Dream Chasers. You know, do something like that. You know, I don't know, but um, I felt this way initially when I went to Syracuse and I landed there on campus and I moved in with Michael and um and it just like felt so right because I had actualized a dream or I had you know had a dream come into fruition which was I wanted to be a college football player um and I made that so much of my mission in life that I missed so much along the way and it didn't matter because when I got to Syracuse, it literally just felt like, um, you know, there's a really famous picture of Kobe just clutching the NBA title. And a lot of basketball players or anybody, but basketball in particular, because they're not in pads and in a helmet and, you know, surrounded by 100 guys trying to get their palms on the trophy. But in basketball, you see it a lot where the, the star that's, you know, unequivocally the star of the team, like a LeBron or a Kobe or a Michael you know, embraces the trophy and they, they hug it. And it's, it's like, it's a person or it's a thing or it's an entity. It's spirit. It's something beyond them. Um, and it's that moment of like, it is done. This one is done. And I did it. It's the sigh of relief. Um, and to me, my sigh of relief was when I showed up to Syracuse and what, um, happened was initially I really kind of like took my foot off the gas. It was like, oh, well, you know what? I was recruited. I got a scholarship and I'm here. And that was my goal. That was my first goal. And I didn't know how to appropriately like shift gears right away. How do I find the gas in the tank to now compete again for a higher level of competition? Or what's the next goal? How do you identify the next goal, right? How do you pivot? How do you take that hard work, that knowledge, how do I turn it into something that's, you know, the next level up? How do I level up? How do I appropriately understand what that is? Because what if I got to Syracuse and I was like, you know what, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And a lot of guys do that and they hit the transfer portal like right away. But it wasn't that. It's like, I knew I was where I needed to be. I loved everybody on the team. I still do. I love the school, love the campus, love the program, love the colors, Love the facilities. They could be better, but you know, it's like I, this is what I signed up for. I can't be like upset. It, it wasn't that. It was like I didn't know what I was doing after that because the goal was to get there. I, the The roadmap was not given to me. So it's like when I got there, there there was the feeling of I opened up that like buried treasure and it was just like empty. But for me, I opened it up and there was like a a, a, a note in there, and it was like, well you know, what you get out of this is what's next. It's not right now. And to me, it's like, I, I'm never willing to sacrifice the the journey anymore along the way. I'm never, I'm never going to miss out on hanging out with friends. I'm not going to miss out on um, having a nice moment because I'm too focused on, okay, well, I just got married. What's the next deal? Like, how do I get Katie moved out here faster? Because she's still living in Houston, by the way, and it, we're, we're doing this commuter deal and it's killing me. I mean, it is hard as hard can be. And I'm thinking, it's like, you know, hey, you know, do I get, you know, did I fail because I'm not further along in my career and all this? And it's like, no, nah, you know, I'm, I'm 26. And a lot of the older dudes or older people or whoever's listening to this right now are probably thinking like, man, you know, you got time. Don't worry about it. Don't stress. And it's, it's not that I'm worried about it or I'm stressed about it. It's like, how do I not make this a counterproductive point? And I've really just been thinking about lately is how do I appropriately level up and how do I take that known entity, my best attribute, which is hard work, dedication, and an unrelenting ability to you know, pursue the goal. And I think, to, to be honest, if you make it to that D1 level, and it's certainly higher, like if, uh, if I ever get a resume one day, from like if I'm not doing coaching or anything like that, then it says like st- uh, played all four years of football at um, shoot man. It could be Louisville, it could be Florida State, you know, it could be any team that I don't like. And I see that coming in, I just be like, I don't even call the guy from the interview. He's got the job. Like he's just got to show up and not blow it. 
you know, because that, that's the level of dedication and, and the eyes. And yeah, sh- sure, some guys are that talented. And if it doesn't work out, then it's like, okay, well, that's on me. But I, I don't I don't think it's that. I think the thought that I'm having here is, how do I translate my greatest skill and then parlay that into something else? How do I pivot? How do I reinvent? How, you know, where am I going with this? You know, you see me here? You see where I'm going here? Remember, if you get it early, we can go home. And uh, I can get back to my quote-unquote honeymoon. Um, to me, it's all about just reapplying those same skills and finding the next prize. And you can call me like a psycho killer for that, or you know, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or whatever. Like, I think it's kind of normal, but it's like to me, it's like I was so depressed after my football career ended abruptly because right when I was about to apply the same focus, passion, energy, hunger. It was taken away from me. It's like I will never be I will never compete for anything ever again. And competition is the only thing that I excel in. And to me, getting married was the first time since getting that scholarship and arriving out at the Q's campus or getting a tackle for loss in practice or anything where I was like, you know what, man? You did it. And you can I can tell myself forever that I did it. I'm married, and now the next thing that I get to do is like totally up to me, and I can continue to level up without missing things along the way. Because on this engagement tour that we did and went on, I realized that I was able to do both. I was able to experience everything while continuing to focus on that next goal, which for me was coaching, and to coach at a high level. You know, not to be like some Joe Blow coach that's down the street that's coaching a team that's zero and ten in high school and is a laughing. It's like it's not that. It's like no. It's like I'm gonna go. I gotta go do what I gotta do. And for me, I'm now understanding that human beings are so capable, and that if there is doubt out there, that doesn't have to be out there. Because if I, I'm not kidding, seriously, if I can do it with all of my miraculous flaws, my overwhelming flaws. Then anybody can do it. And that's for whatever dream you want to do or whatever dream you have. I mean, we're we're, we're dream chasing here. So about the wedding, I mean, I was just, I was over the moon. It was a little bit of everybody. Michael Lasker's there. We're we're, we're chopping it up. We're watching football. Thank the Lord the Orange weren't on because if they lost, man, it would have been a a dilemma, as they say. This town wouldn't have been big enough for the two of us. If Syracuse lost my wedding day, they just don't go together. So the fact that we didn't even have to broach that subject was fantastic, you know, because then you got the the guy, the you know, the star and the co-captain, or you know, captain and co-captain, Michael and I, man and best man, and we both would have been up there just grinding our teeth, being like, dude, like, what the fuck's going on over here? You know what I'm saying? But thankfully, we didn't have to get that far. But um, the efficient. Like the pastor and his wife got COVID two days before, so we had an audible there. Little hut, 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 gold 18, gold 18, gold is the audible, 18 is the play, gold 18, kill, 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 run to the left. New pastor comes in, get that handled. Um, we, my mom hired a cellist to come do like the, it's super over the top. Hired a cellist to come do the intro music and the outro music on walking up and down the aisle. Didn't even show up. So that he had the date confused. Guy just didn't even care. That's that's what I think happened. Nobody just doesn't get back to somebody for weeks at a time and then say, sorry, I got the wrong date. That just doesn't happen, right? But everything worked out. And I was just like so overwhelmed to have everybody there. It was fantastic. And I uh, did it at my parents' backyard. Pictures to come, so when they become available, I will definitely share them on Twitter, at Tyler Morona. You can always find me there. Um, trying to get a little bit more um, engaged again online, but it's been tough. I'm, I'm a busy man these days. And, um, you know, it was, it was really fantastic. And uh, it was a hot day. My back was full sweat. But, you know, I, I had a great time. And I've noticed, you know, because I we had our wedding this past weekend, but the weekend before, the like last weekend of September, we went to somebody else's wedding, a friend, college friend. Somebody's always got to be violently pregnant at every wedding now, and it's like I'm talking like minutes 
before somebody's about to give birth. I mean, what's up with that? I, it's just like, what is going on with all the pregnancy these days? I mean, pregnancy is out of control. The pregnancy rate has got to be through the roof. You have never seen a pregnancy rate like we have here. You've never seen it. We have the highest pregnancy rate at weddings. I I, I feel like it's just got to be, though. And sorry, I just had to do it, Trump. I don't support Trump. I don't em- embrace nor decline Trump. I just had to do it in a Trump voice. So I'm I'm apolitical on this podcast, but I am pro-comedy. Anyhow, the violently pregnant lady was Katie's uh, maid of honor. She wasn't violently pregnant. Our wedding planner, who I call my agent for this whole situation, was like literally about ready to give birth. Now, Katie's maid of honor was also pregnant, but then last week we went to this wedding, and I, I think this lady was like sweat, having cold sweats, like, you know, trying to talk yourself out of this is the moment it's happening. And it's like every wedding I've been to in like the past two years, somebody's always going to be pregnant. And granted, it's like, not that pregnant ladies can't do anything. Don't get me wrong, like, you know, they have lives too, but it's just like, what are the odds? And it's like at some point, you know, like, I should go to like the next 13 weddings. There should never be a pregnant lady there. And again, you know, it's like the odds are strong, you know, it's like we're in this way of life. And it's like, I'm not even talking about the ladies that are pregnant that are there that aren't showing. Or, you know, it's like, oh, there's, I have no problem with pregnancies. I have no problem with the, you know, crazy pregnant ladies coming through. It's just like, it just seems like an odd coincidence. Does it not? That's all. So I, I love all the I love all the kids. I love all the pregnant women out there. I just uh, it just seems bizarre. You know, I that's just something that I've been running into lately. And I don't know if that's you know that's a thing or or what. Um it is just so much fun to be out here too in California. If I could be the salesman for California, I would be, but and I really don't want to rub it in because you know I I I see Sean and Joe over in uh, the Carolinas, or you know Sean's going to want to say he's in Virginia Beach, but he's like literally. I bet I could throw a baseball from his house into North Carolina, so he lives in North Carolina. So the fact that they both live in North Carolina, I'm not going to get down on them. I'm not going to you know crush the constituency that is the Q's militia. All I'm trying to say is, if you want to waste time, come waste it here in California in SoCal. Get get that skin a little vitamin D. Come on out of here. Put your toes in the sand. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be mad at you. Um and I it's crazy. I, I've like haven't even been to the beach. I coach in the beach cities, but I don't even go. Um because this whole corona deal is crazy. Um as if, <laughs> as if anybody didn't know. Jeez Louise, I'm tired. I'm gonna try to get the um four minutes of teaser uploaded and um hopefully you enjoy that. I love you guys. I'll be back clear minded next week. Goodbye. All right, everybody, before we get into a little bonus content of Thai Thoughts, maybe a little overtime, get a little insight. That's coming up right now. But first, look, I told you earlier about betonline.ag. Have you been there yet? Have you? Be honest. Look, go to betonline.ag. Just check it out. See if it's right for you. Do your research. Betting online might be a little bit risky for some people, but look, you don't have to bet a ton. Go there. It explains everything. The, the mobile site is easy to use. The desktop site is easy to use. Go there. Check it out. Look, Bet Online's going the extra mile this year just for you guys. So you can get in on everything imaginable from live sports action to the virtual stuff, if that's your thing. From game spread totals to team player and coaching props, Bet Online gives you more options to wager than any other place online. Head over there right now and take advantage of all of the great sign-up bonuses. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Thank you. Bet online. All right, so special edition. Um, this is happening in my living room right now, um, recording a podcast here in this makeshift studio, and uh, it's the day of my wedding. Yes, I come to you on the day of my wedding, Godfather style. What are you going to do? Um, but we, we've got the groomsmen here, and we're going to do um, just tell a little bit about ourselves. And since it's the day of my wedding, and I'm getting married to a woman, I wanted to talk about. And I've been wondering, like, when other guys thought that like they were interested in girls so like michael we'll start with you everybody know friend of the program he's been on the, the show before um this is michael lasker number 67 on, at syracuse but number one in all of our hearts best man so michael when did when did you think like when did girls become a part of your life the show is now yours 
So I would definitely say it from a very young age. I'll probably say like preschool. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> preschool, first grade ish, you know, kindergarten. I remember like having a crush on my, my teacher. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, I, that's kind of where, you know, I guess my attraction from, for girls happened. It was, and, it was a very like, young when, age. Like when, when did it become like reality? When, when was like your first girlfriend, quote unquote? First girlfriend, quote unquote, was probably like middle school. Okay. And then, you know, obviously from there it just gets more serious and serious. And then, you know, I'm married now. So, very true. <laughs> to a woman. Also <laughs> true. Factual. Yeah, so. <laughs> Factual. So, yeah. Cool. All right, next up is Doug. I'm Doug. Uh, the cousin of who Tyler's marrying. I would say, I, th- I would say things started getting like real around middle school. So first girlfriend, middle school, had some crushes in elementary school, but not nothing too serious. All right. I am uh, Justin, the longstanding friend of the groom, Tyler. And um, I'm currently married also to a woman, <laughs> which is factual. Um, I think my interest in women started in about mm, elementary school, but didn't have my first girlfriend until high school. So a little bit of a late bloomer for me, but got married at 25. So early and late bloomer at the same time. All right. My name is Ken. I am the brother of the bride. I am also married to a woman for seven years. Factual. <laughs> I'm very factual. Uh, I would say the interest in, in women probably started early middle school, late elementary school. Uh, no, definitely definitely elementary school, about fourth grade. So okay. it was good. That's good fair. days. So, I think for myself, this is this is Tyler, host of the program. I think you know me by now. Um, middle, I think middle school is definitely like the fair answer. I definitely knew in like elementary school. I, I think I like was forced into a lot of like decision making because like you're told from a young age as a man like oh you're supposed to like girls like all that stuff right, but like. I don't even think I like knew what an emotion was like, like and how to define an emotion until very late in life. And I think we're still getting there. So it's, it's interesting to like now give like Justin married at 25. Ken, you are 21, 21, 21 factual and 22. 22. Right. So we got, we got a host, we got a host of, of young married men. So, um, if, if you're still out there and you're thinking like, Oh, I'm 12 years old listening to this. Yes. There's still, uh, faith for you. Also, if you're 40, there's still faith for you too. So that was, uh, that was that. Thanks for joining.